It's almost Father's Day here in the US and I have found that men, especially older men, are the hardest people to shop for. A nice box of cigars is often a great gift idea. If you really want to go that extra mile, maybe spend a day and make this custom wood dispenser that you can give as a gift along with the cigars. Now I know there's a bunch of cigar snobs out there with itchy fingers who are just dying to comment about storing cigars at the proper humidity. Keep watching and I'll address that concern at the end. This video is sponsored by my friends at The Home Depot. I started the project at my miter saw, cutting the 1x3 and 1x4 frame pieces to length. This is a great project to use for some of your shorter scraps. Next, I used a multi-mark tool to lay out the location on the side pieces where I needed to drill a hole to accommodate the dowel. I then clamped the side pieces together using some spring clamps. Using a cordless drill and a 1 and 3 8 inch diameter Forstner bit, I drilled through the thickness of both boards. Forstner bits have the tendency to blow out the back side of soft woods like this pine that I'm using. When I'm drilling this size of hole, I like to drill halfway through one side and then flip the material over and drill the other halfway. Next, I found the center of the width of the sideboards. I then made lines to mark a space in the middle that was wide enough to hold the cigars. This width will vary depending on the exact cigars that you plan on using. I needed to cut grooves that will hold the acrylic sheets which make up the front and back of the dispenser. I set the depth of my table saw blade to about 3 8 of an inch deep. I then made two grooves down the length of the entire inner face of both side pieces. At this point, I began to assemble the frame. I added wood glue to the joints and then a couple of drops of a quick setting CA glue to help hold everything in place quicker. I then aligned the sides at a 90 degree angle to the 1x4 bottom plate. I used clamps to apply pressure while the glue dried, but as you can see that ended up pulling the top of the sides in out of a 90 degree angle. I flipped one of the heads of my clamps around to create a spreader. I then used these little aluminum DFM squares to verify that the inside corners where the pieces met was a perfect 90 degree angle while the glue dried. To securely hold the sides to the bottom, I pre-drilled and then drove four two inch wood screws. Are you liking what you see? Make sure you tap that like button just down below. I then flipped the frame right side up and test fit the one and three eighths inch dowel. I also measured to determine the size that I needed to cut the acrylic sheets. I then moved over to my table saw and cut the one eighth of an inch thick acrylic sheets to the proper dimensions. In order for the wood dowel to be able to pick up and dispense the cigars, it needs to have a one inch wide groove routed into it. Running a router along a curved surface is really tricky and pretty dangerous, so that meant I needed to make a jig to hold the dowel in place. I started by finding the center of a scrap piece of one by three board. I then clamped the board and a piece of scrap to my workbench and drilled a one and three eighths inch hole. If this is the first Pneumatic Datic video that you've seen, welcome! Make sure you subscribe so you get notified every time I release a new video. After the hole was drilled, to cut the board in half, I used my new Makita cordless portable bandsaw. This tool was totally overkill, but I had recently received the portable bandsaw as a part of the prospective tool review program that I do at the Home Depot, and I wanted to try it out. These type of saws are usually used to cut metal. A jigsaw with a wood cutting blade would work just fine. To assemble the rest of the jig, I needed to determine the size of the base plate of my router. It was three and a half inches, which conveniently is the same width as a one x four board. I cut a piece of one x four door trim as the base of the jig. I did, however, have to rip down a board to one and three eighths inches wide so I could create runners the same height as the dowel that the base plate of the router could slide along. Don't worry, I have free building plans for the whole cigar dispenser, including the jig, on my website. Check out the link in the description box. I used the base of the jig as well as the contoured end pieces to determine the length of the runners. I then began to assemble the jig pieces together. I started by attaching the runners vertically to the contoured end pieces using CA glue and some 23 gauge pins. The pins are totally optional, they just help hold my pieces together while the glue dries so I can move a little bit quicker. 
I then used more CA glue on the bottom of the runner assembly to attach it to the base plate of the jig. I then flipped everything over, pre-drilled, and attached the pieces together using one and one quarter inch screws. Next, I cut two 1x4 side pieces from the same trim material that I used for the base plate. I added them to the sides of the jig assembly and held them in place using more 1 and 1 quarter inch screws. To prevent the router from cutting a groove the entire length of the dowel, I added a couple of little stop blocks to the ends of the jig. The last step was to drill holes up through the center of the contoured end pieces. That gave me a place to drive screws into the dowel to hold it in place during routing. To cut the groove, I used a 1 inch diameter bowl bit which I found on Amazon. The link's in the description box. I started with the bit exposed only about an eighth of an inch from the base plate of the router. My first round using the jig, I found a scrap piece of dowel to experiment on. It worked really well, so I felt confident moving on to the actual dowel that I was going to use for the dispenser. I put the dowel into the jig and secured it using screws driven from the underside. I also discovered on my first test piece that the groove was a little long, so I added a couple of more spacer blocks to the end stops. I then began cutting the groove using multiple eighth inch deep passes. I stopped when the groove was about half an inch deep. I then took the dowel over to my miter station to cut the excess off the ends. This also removed the holes where the screws were driven in the jig. I slid the dowel into the holes of the dispenser. I also added a cigar into the groove so I could determine the exact height of the acrylic sheets. I made a mark so that the sheets would be flush to the side pieces of the dispenser and then used my miter saw to cut off the excess. I used a tape measure to make sure that the dowel was centered between the sides. I also made a mark to indicate the outside edge of the sides. To hold the dowel in place in the dispenser and prevent it from being pulled out, I wanted to add smaller perpendicular wooden pins. I drilled quarter inch holes through the dowel where I had made my pencil marks. I then used a handsaw to cut two two inch lengths of quarter inch dowel. Before beginning the final assembly, I gave everything a good sanding using 220 grit paper. Once all the surfaces were nice and smooth, I inserted the dowel into the holes on the frame. I then pushed in the quarter inch pins through the holes, locking the dowel into place. To hold the top of the dispenser in place, I figured the easiest solution would be dowels and a friction fit. I marked the location for the dowels on the top of the side pieces. I drilled four holes 3 8 of an inch deep. To orient the location of the dowels from the sides to the bottom side of the top piece, I used a little trick. I inserted some scrap half inch dowels into the holes and then marked the tops of them with some bright red lipstick. I then carefully aligned the corners of the top piece of the dispenser. I firmly pressed down and then when I removed it, the lipstick had left marks where I needed to drill my corresponding holes. I then replaced the dowels with fresh 3 quarter inch long ones, which were held in place with more CA glue. When the glue was fully dried, I could test the top to make sure that it fit perfectly. I wiped off any residual sawdust and then it was time to apply my finish. Since this dispenser is going to hold cigars which are consumed, I wanted to use a food grade mineral oil finish. After rubbing in one coat of mineral oil, I decided to follow up with a coat of beeswax. After applying the beeswax and allowing it to dry, I wanted to buff it to a little bit of a higher sheen. I used my Dremel Versa cleaning tool with a Scotch-Brite pad on top of a chamois to buff the wax and get it as smooth as butter. 
Finally, I got the satisfaction of pulling back the protectoplastic film from the acrylic sheet. I added a few drops of glue to the edges of the acrylic sheets and then slid them into place. The last step was to fill up the dispensers with the cigars that I was going to use, and I was done. I think this is a really classy way to step up your gift giving and to give something that's a little bit more personal. Now to jump into the humidity situation. Cigars are preserved best when they're stored in about 70% humidity and out of direct sunlight. So with that in mind, I actually designed this dispenser to be used with Tubo cigars, or cigars that come sealed in glass or aluminum tubes that are humidity controlled. If your favorite cigars don't come in tubes, I've actually included a link in the description box for some aftermarket tubes that you can put your cigars into. Another option is to give this gift with the intention that the cigars are going to be consumed within a couple of days. Or finally, you could just be like me and give chocolate cigars instead. Yeah, nobody that I know actually smokes, but the dispenser's a good idea, right? Speaking of dispensers, make sure that you check out my candy dispenser video. And while you're at it, take a look at this one. Thanks for following along with all my crazy ideas. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching.